Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming here today. Um, a few years ago, we threw a convention here at the same location, and we couldn't even use the word cannabis in the name of the convention. So we had to call it the FCC event. Um, I saw a lot of hands raised by, this is your first cannabis convention. Can I see that again? The people that, the, wow, impressive. I remember my first cannabis convention that I went to a number of years ago, and I was kind of intimidated. I really didn't know what to expect, you know, what, what was going to happen. Um, I was not always an advocate for cannabis. Out of all those people that raised their hand, how many people in this room have used cannabis? Fantastic. How many people have used it for medical reasons? Even better. The reason that I found the cannabis industry was I had a relationship with opioids that existed from 2007 through 2010. I was in a car accident on January 2nd, 2007, 10 years ago, and subsequent to that, I received numerous surgeries, including spinal fusion, and used opioids to get through my day, to deal with the pain that I was in, and to function. I was running a $30 million a year telecom company based right here in Florida, and didn't realize it, but I was slowly killing myself. 2010, I was diagnosed with stage three liver disease, type two diabetes, and a case of pancreatitis. My doctors told me if I didn't have some changes to my lifestyle that I would need a liver transplant. So I spent three days on my couch detoxing from a concoction of Vicodin, Dilaudid, and many other pain pills, including Xanax for the anxiety that I was in. I vowed never to go back to that again. I was able to lose weight, reverse my diabetes, and basically save my life. Fast forward to 2012. I continued operating my business. I went into the emergency room to receive a CT scan, and I was alerted that I had a mass on my pancreas. Well, I didn't know what that meant. So quickly, I went to the same doctors that treated me for my liver, and I said, they found a mass on my pancreas. What does this mean? He said, well, it means that you're probably going to need a surgery called the Whipple, where they're going to remove part of your pancreas and your intestine. You're going to be out of work and in the hospital for up to eight weeks and you're going to need pain medication again. So I started, like everybody else, wondering what was I going to do. So I started looking for alternative treatments. I heard Magic Johnson treated his HIV out of the country. So I started Google searching and looking, and I found John McAfee down in Costa Rica growing medicine. And it sparked something. I was like, why is he growing what he calls medicine? Started researching what was going on. And I found out that marijuana was being used as medicine. I found out about RSO, Rick Simpson oil. And I watched a video called Run for the Cure. Um, I was going to Moffitt Cancer Center. And after four months, I was told that it wasn't cancer that the scarring on my pancreas was okay, and that I had a second chance on life. I went to my physician, and I said, well, what is this, why? And he told me, he said, you have a second chance on life, Tom. You know, go do something that you want. So I left my position as CEO of a company called Crush Communications. Some of the people in the room here uh, worked with me at that company for 15 years. And I decided I wanted to do something to help other people that may not know about cannabis. Um, when I found out, I was in a position where I could travel this country. So I traveled everywhere. I became a patient in the state of Washington. I became a patient in the state of California. I 
um, joined groups like Marijuana Policy Project. I joined the NCIA. I became an investor at the ArcView Group. And I was able to meet some amazing people, some amazing people that had been fighting and that knew that cannabis was medicine for the last 20 years. And I, I really felt like I had lived in a bubble for the past 20 years. And with that, I decided that I wanted to change people's lives by helping to educate them. And that's why we started the Florida Cannabis Coalition. Myself and Pete Sessa in 2014 decided that um, we wanted to support what was, what was happening here in Florida. So I, I had found out about uh, Kim Russell with Puff Puff Pass, which eventually turned into United for Care. We became um, very active with that group in helping to educate. And I was devastated when we didn't pass in 2014. We had 58%. Um, but we, we put on seven events with the Florida Cannabis Coalition. And what we did was we decided that we didn't want to make those events only available to people that could afford to travel and buy a ticket and basically spend a full day of their life out there. So we wanted to create something different. And that's why we created what we have right now. Florida Cannabis Coalition is, is a membership-driven organization, which we do events like this. We also do workshops. We provide content through social media. But what we really want to do is we want to educate people. We want to educate people from every piece of it, and we want to be all-inclusive. So we don't want, because somebody doesn't have access to an event, or they cannot spend a weekend, or they can't travel this country, to be able to be without information, accurate information. So what we've learned and the people that we've met throughout this country, we bring them here. We bring film crew, Leon's here, and he filmed all of our events in 2014, and we make that content available. So if you're here today and you step out and you miss one of our speakers, we're recording everything that happens here today, and we're making that available. And we're gonna continue to do that. We have six events planned this year. The next one's going to be in Orlando. Um, I vow to bring some people here that will speak to you that can bring different perspectives. Hopefully you can connect with them. Hopefully you can meet them. We are also launched Green Carpet Events, which is a networking group, which is going to be meeting on the weekends. And it's just, net, it's exactly that, it's networking. It's a place where you, as a newcomer to this industry, which this room is full of, can meet people that may have been involved for a year, two years. Some, some of the people that come here have been involved for 20 years. You can ask them questions. You can feel comfortable to start that conversation. So today, if you look around this room, you are the people that are going to shape the cannabis industry in this state. So we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to give a professional appearance, to be able to communicate, articulate, and basically connect, connect with people, people whose lives are dependent on what's happening. You know, it hits the news and everybody sees the money that's being made and there's tons of, I saw a few people that raised, they want to invest capital into the industry. That's one of the ways that I got involved and it's great. There's going to be tons of money that's going to be made, and we're, we're here. But there's also going to be tons of money that's going to be lost. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is an industry. It's a business. It's just like any other business. If you think because it's marijuana or it's cannabis that money is just going to flow to you, it's not. It takes work. It takes diligence. It takes continuously educating yourself. I've never seen rules change and move and pivot so drastically as what's happening here. The simple signature of a piece of paper in Washington can change everything, can change everything, one way or the other. We have people here today which are going to talk to you about the legalities of the way things are structured now. Not everybody's going to be happy with the way things are developing, 
Not everybody's going to be satisfied for their own personal gains of how the rules are being written. But it's our job as constituents in the state of Florida to help to communicate. The legislatures, they don't know. They don't know what's going on. And they need people that are educated to help them understand. So by being here, you've, took, you've taken the first step in learning more about what's going on. You're gonna be able to meet people that have flown out here from California, from Colorado. Um, we're going to be able to introduce you to innovators, um, attorneys that are paving the way in trying to make the laws, you know, create an environment that will create a free market in this state. Um, you know, when we first got started, like I said earlier, we couldn't even say the word cannabis in the name of our, our organization. You're gonna see many, many organizations that are gonna pop up and they're gonna have events and they're gonna have things like this. My recommendation is go to as many as you can afford to. Go to as many places as you can. Whether it's our organization or someone else's or a networking group, get out there and meet people. And if you can't, build your network. You know, get some business cards today. Meet, meet others that will help you. Does anybody have any questions for me before I turn it over to our next speaker? No questions? Well, again, I want to thank everyone that was here today, or that is here today. Um, if you miss anything, like I said, we're going to have all the content being curated and available through our site. If you're not a member of the Florida Cannabis Coalition, please join. If you can, join. We have over 100 new members this month. We have um, 600 members that have joined since 2014. My goal is to make this one of the largest organizations here in Florida. We've been around the longest. We stuck it out in 2015 when everybody else left this state and forgot about us. Um, you know, groups like United for Care kept plugging away, kept plugging away, and change has happened. But this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Thank you.